In this video, I'm going to show you how to dissect a crayfish. This is something you will do in the crayfish practical yourself. And the crayfish that we are using for it is the species Astacus leptodactylus. The common name for it is the Turkish crayfish since it occurs mostly in Southeast Europe. And it has been introduced to England, so here it is an invasive species. So from the outside you see that these crayfish have many legs. So in fact they have 19 pairs of legs. And I'll guide you through the different legs first, since that is something you will explore when you start. Before you start the dissection, you want to see all the different legs. So at the moment, what you see from the outside is two pairs of antenna, the inner pair and the outer pair. And then you see five legs on each side. So these five pairs of legs give them the name and they are called or they belong to the order decapod crustaceans. Decapoda means ten legs. So now Let's look at all these different legs and 19 all together. So the 19 include the two pairs of antennae. The first pair actually is an important organ for smelling. So it's more or less the nose of the crayfish. Um, the second pair of antennae that's the that's important for tactile orientation of the crayfish so that's for the more or less the blind stick of the crayfish or lobsters have the same long antennae and sometimes they are injured or parts are broken off and that's mainly from intraspecific fights when two crayfish fight for dominance they first go and cut off the claws using their chile the, um, those claws. Okay, and after these two pairs of antennae come six pairs of mouth parts. And these include a pair of mandibles, which is around the mouth, which would be somewhere here. And then um, five pairs of other mouth parts, two parts of um, two pairs of maxillae and three pairs of maxillipeds and I'll show you the details of those maxillipeds later on. So I'll come back to those later. Then you have the, um, the five walking legs. The first pair has the big chile. They are not really used for walking. They are more used for fighting and for body defense, these large chile. And usually the male claws are bigger than the female claws since there's more fighting in the males. Then the second and third pair of walking legs also have little chile, little claws at the end and they use these little chile in order to pick up food which they stuff into their mouth. So around here again the third pair also has little chile and then we have the fourth and the fifth pair, no chile at the end. And then we have the tail and underneath the tail you have five pairs of pleopods, which means feet at the tail. Pleon means tail. And the first two of these pleopods actually are modified in males or in females as well but they look different between males and females. So in males they are called the gonopodes and these are the male copulatory organs. So the male will form little sperm sausages using these two funnel shaped end of the pleopods and the next three um, pleopods actually are also called swimmerets. So they can create currents which are important for forward locomotion. So when they move forward 
they get um, support from these three swim rats that beat and produce some backward directed current which helps them move forward. And the final appendage is the uropod, which is part of this tail fan. The tail fan is important for escape movements, so they can beat the whole tail very quickly in a tail flip under the frontal body and accelerate backward using that and the tail fan is very important for that. So these outer appendages are called uropods and they are part of the tail fan. And this here in the middle is the anus. So let's come back now to the, max, uh, to the mouth parts and I'm starting here at the third pair of mouth parts and hopefully you can recognize this and it's in focus when I move closer to the camera. So this is going from the last one to the first one. This is the third pair of maxillipeds. It has an inner foot which is here, endopod. They have these biramus appendages, two parts. Inner foot is endopod, outer foot is exopod, and the outer foot actually is part of the, the fan organs. This little flagelli, uh, flagellum can create currents. So that's the third maxillipede, the biggest. Then the second maxillipede also has an outer foot which you can pull the appendage out from, the exopode and the endopode which is in the middle is here. Then the, that was the second maxillipede and the first maxillipede is here and when I pull it out I also pull out this endopode here, so this structure. So this is the maxillipeds out of the way and then you see there are more structures underneath the maxillipeds and these are the two pairs of maxillae. So this is the second pair of maxillae, all this belongs to it and also the structure inside belongs to the maxillae that's important for ventilation of the crayfish, this part. And then here is the first maxilla, which is just on top of the, of the mandible. And the mandible is the, yeah, the jaw of the, of the crayfish. It's quite big and stiff. And so it's very good in tearing uh, down like pieces of muscle or other things. So it, it's good for biting and it has a little helping foot next to it so if anything drops out of the mouth or from the side this little appendage is good in stuffing it back into it. So next you will cut these appendages away from the crayfish and you will cut only one side of these appendages which I will demonstrate now. So I'll start with a, with a Europod and I'll I'll cut this now here. Actually I use the bigger scissors That's how you cut it off. Then that's the last one place here. Then the, the last pleopod cut off here and place it on top of the Europod, the, the next pleopod. Always make sure that you cut at the very base of those And 
then the two gonopodes, two male appendages. So you just lay them on top of each other. And then the last walking leg, again, you just cut it. You can cut it here at the coxa, which the, is the first part that connects to the body. And next comes the fourth walking leg, cutting at the coxa. Then the third walking leg and the second walking leg and um, the big claw, the first walking leg. Now we come to the to the mouth parts and we start with a third maxillipede and again you pull out both the exopode and the endopode and cut it at the very base. So we place it here for now and then you continue with the with the next one that's the second maxillipod, maxillipid, cut it down there. It's on top of the third and then the next one will be, again you pull out the, the flagellum and then you can remove both Here it gets a little bit fiddly. Easiest is always to hold on to the to the flagelli and then cut as deep as possible. Right, so I separated the flagellum from the endopode, so I just placed the endopode next to the flagellum, as you should do. And you will arrange all those on a piece of paper later on. And now we only need the hold on, that's already the um, the first maxillipad and right so we come to the maxillae and there are two maxillae one is here and the other one would be underneath so you see two structures so can you see this So this you can actually also pull out and you may end up with the whole structure don't know how well you can see this not very well 
And finally, we come to the first maxilli, maxilla, which I will pull out. So you place all of these appendages on a piece of paper next to each other. The final one is the, the mandible, which is here. That's a big jaw and you want to cut it at the very base, really deep down in the crayfish. And you have some cracking going on. So it includes this little arm that I told you about, which kind of sticks to the I think I can't get it in focus. Right here it is. The little arm which is connected to the mandible. And finally you remove the second antenna down here at the very base and the first antenna which is here so that's all 19 appendages. Once you removed all the appendages, you will arrange them all on a piece of paper, like I did here from the Europod all the way through the Pleopods, walking legs, maxillipeds, maxillae, mandible, second and first antenna and then you label them with the correct names. Then you put your name and um, your partner's name on the same sheet and say what this is and then you take a photograph and submit it via canvas. The next step then is to expose the inner organs and in order to do that you need to open the cuticle of the carapace which is here the, or the whole area here is the cephalothorax and that's covered by this shield the carapace. So the way you do that is you take the crayfish in one hand and then there's a membrane between the tail and the cephalothorax and you kind of cut open this membrane and then next you take your big scissors and you cut parallel to this line all the way to the front and make sure that your scissors does not kind of is get, does not get stuck inside the inner organs. You don't want to injure them while doing this cut. So always lead it parallel to the surface of the cuticle. Once you're here, then you may do the second cut on the other side. And again, be mindful that you don't destroy any of the organs that are underneath. So, once you are here, you 
place it back down into the into your tray then you use the forceps and some kind of sharp Uh, instruments like the scissors, maybe the smaller pair of scissors, and you kind of scratch away the tissue and make sure that while you lift this piece of carapace that you don't accidentally remove all the inner organs. So this red skin that you now see here, that's called hypodermis, and it has like red pigments. It's part of the, of the skin underneath the carapace. So you are, we are on the safe side if we see that red membrane here. Organs are, will be underneath. At the end, I do another cut here to completely remove this part of the carapace. Right, now you need to go even further up to remove the remaining bits here and keep carefully balancing your cuts so that you don't destroy any of the organs that are underneath. And this is the last bit, the rostrum. This front shield is called rostrum. Just cut away as much as possible, but keep the last bit of the rostrum. Actually, I can keep it. Right, so that's only the middle part. And on the side, this other part of the carapace actually covers the, the gills. So this need, you need to continue removing that. Let me cut this way. So one side is fully open and now you already can see quite a few organs. First what I will do is remove this red skin here since this is epidermis or also called hypo. Hypo means below. Hypodermis just means it's below the, the carapace. But I need to be careful since there are just some organs underneath. So 
sometimes with one pull you can take it all off. Okay, let me show you what we exposed after removing the carapace. So, coming from the outside, going to the inside, these are the, the gills of the crayfish. As you see, they are connected to the feet. Here, some are connected to the feet, and there are these kind of almost hairy structure and some are connected to this so-called pleura. It's a, it's a dividing membrane or cuticle dividing the outside space where the gills are with the inside space where the digestive organs and the other organs, inner organs are. So then what you will see here from the front, from the head of the crayfish, going down to the midline, to the tail. Um, this all is stomach, crayfish um, stomach, cardiac stomach indeed. And then the lower part would be the pyloric stomach down here. And the pyloric stomach actually is connected to the digestive gland. That's also sometimes called, uh, no, it's just called um, digestive gland or hepatopancreas that's quite big and goes all the way to here all this is on the side is digestive gland so a big gland on both sides then you also see this white stone here which is a reservoir for calcium since they need calcium after they have molted in order to have a reserve for the next um, calcium. Then in the middle, like a glibbery clear area, that's the heart. So this would be the heart which is transparent. Then just on top of the heart, on both sides here, are the male gonads, the testes, that you can see here. And finally, if you look down underneath the heart you can see these kind of white loops here and um, they are called vas deferens they are kind of ducts, ducts that take the sperm to the um, to a pore where the sperm is released and then used by the by the gonopodes the, the two appendages pleopod appendages of the male. So the next will be that I will open the, the tail of the crayfish to expose the muscles there. On the side of a crayfish you see another structure which is here and that's a muscle that was previously connected to the carapace and that's the mandible muscle. So if you have a good look at that muscle in its color, it's connect, it connects with a long tendon to the mandible. So this is where the mandible is pulled. You see a big muscle is necessary for that. So the next is to expose the muscles of the tail. So you turn around the crayfish and then you do kind of two cuts parallel to the side of the, of the tail. Again, just shallow cuts parallel to the, to the cuticle. and a second cut 
on the opposite side. And then you do the same thing as before. You try to remove the cuticle without destroying too much of the underlying tissue. And you can just scrape off some of that. Or cut off some of the tissue. So there are two layers of muscle. What you want to expose is the, the gut which is down here. And the upper layer of muscles is not, not so important. And then a final cut to remove the whole cuticle from the tail. Now some cleaning up is needed before you can start your drawing. And I will do that. So this gives you a little bit closer look at the inner organs. I add some more water so that they don't dry out. And you will see the hind gut the abdominal muscles on both sides. You will see the vast difference here. This is the heart the transparent structure. On both sides of the hearts are the testes, just anterior frontwise of the heart. Then on top of that, on both sides, onto the side, this is the digestive gland the hepatopancreas and all this is the stomach the top part is the cardiac stomach and the lower part would be the pylorus and the hepatopancreas is connected to the pylorus then you see the two mandible muscle one side here and the other side here and finally you see these calcium carbonate storage stone here that is reserved and will be used for the next after the next mold after they have molded once you cleaned it you can further stick down the crayfish to bring it in a good position using these pins. A good position to create a, a drawing.
and it may help to use a little bit of water for the organs before they start drying out the inner organs. Then you sometimes see, see them a little bit better. So again, to point out this is where the heart is, transparent organ all the way here. Then this is where the, the testicles, the testes are of the crayfish, left and right, two different ones. These are the vast difference here, the gills. This is the pleura, the the membrane or cuticle that separates the gills from the inner organs. That's the mandible muscle and this all belongs to the stomach. And the stomach of course is connected to the hind gut which is in the tail. And these are the abdominal muscles down here. So this is would be a good position um, in order to create your drawing. You can also see the, the mandible muscle on the other side here. And in your drawing, you just need to draw all the appendages of one side. Of course, you remove them from the other side, plus the outer, um, the outline of the crayfish body, maybe the, the two antennae, the eyes, plus all the inner organs, including the, the tail. So now I will see if I can open the cardia part of the stomach so I can expose these little teeth, which usually are in action, in action all the time in order to grind down the food. As I explained in the lecture, crayfish, apart from the mandibles, don't really have teeth. So the way for them to chew down and um, grind down the food that they eat, they use um, little teeth in their stomach. So let's see if we can see those. So they should be just underneath here. So just cut into the stomach. Right, so I just cut one of these teeth, which is here on the side. Another one should be at the top, just there in my pincer here. So let's clean it with some water. Okay, so this is one of those little teeth here. Over there, you can see it. There. And that's another one here. And there should be a third one, which is on this side of the wall of the stomach. 
So it's down there. One, two, three. So three little teeth moving against each other in order to grind down the food, which is here. So that's a mechanical digestion. And then there will be enzymatic digestion starting in the pyloric stomach, which starts just underneath next to the cardiac stomach. So the next is we just remove the whole intestine, uh, the whole digestive system. in order to see more structures further inside the crayfish. We remove this, this tone. And this is all green gland, or oh, not green gland, sorry, this is the hepatopancreas. So let's try to remove that. All that's left here is the mandible muscle from one side and here you would have the hepatopancreas from the of the left side. I remove that as well. You see it's quite big. And this would be the heart which I have in the forceps now. And these things are the testicles here. And you see they are connected somehow with these white, whitish ducts here. So the, um, these ducts are the vast difference. Let's take them all out. And you see here, of course, the intestine and the hindgut. So, what remains to be explored is the nervous system and the so-called green glands. The green glands are the kidneys of the crayfish. They are connected to the, to the bladder. And just, let's just clean this a little bit. The, the brain would be very close to the eyes. It's, it, it would be just here and it would be a little yellowish. So it should be the structure just here that I have in my forceps there. And on the left and the right of the brain here and there, unfortunately with this, with the contrast that we have here, they are not so clearly visible, but these are the so-called green glands, the kidneys. So they have slightly greenish appearance.
So again, this is where the brain is.